everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video, we're gonna draw and label the entire unit circle. And I'm gonna show you how I can build this whole unit circle. And I don't really have to memorize very much at all. And I'm a firm believer in not memorizing the unit circle. Instead, understand as much as you can about it and how it works, and then you can build it if you need to. But you do not have to memorize it. So let's go and get started. The unit circle, what is it? It's a circle with a radius of one. So the distance from the center to any of these points on the edge of the circle is one because the radius is one, okay? So that's one thing we know. We know the center is at zero, zero, okay? And we know that the unit circle in general, uh, we usually use radians to measure angles. So we have one revolution is what? Two pi radians. And I made a video on degrees and radians. In fact, I'll link a bunch of videos up here that relate to this stuff we're doing. I made a video on degrees and radians, uh, special triangles, all kinds of stuff. I'll put the links up here. So we have, we start at zero and we end at two pi. I'm gonna put all my angles in here and I'm gonna put the values out here just to keep it more organized because otherwise I'll have all kinds of stuff everywhere. So zero to two pi. So that means half a revolution is what? This is pi. Half a revolution is pi. And that means what? A quarter of a revolution What's halfway between zero and pi? That is pi over two. Pi over two. What's halfway between pi and two pi? That is three pi over two. Three pi over two. All right, so now I've got some important angles written down. And again, remember, when we have a central angle, we start from here and we rotate around this way. So I'm starting at zero, I rotate to pi. 3 pi over 2, that's how it works. Unless we have a negative angle, then we're working back this way. But for the sake of our unit circle, we have the angles from 0 all the way to 2 pi. So I have these angles in between here. How many do I have? Well, again, all these angles and all these values come from our special triangles, okay? Our special triangles. Just imagine taking our special triangles. We have the 45, 45, 90, and we have the 30, 60, 90, and putting them in standard position inside the unit circle. Think of them as being trapped inside the unit circle. And we actually end up having three angles because I can, can position that 30, 60, 90 triangle where the 30 degree angle is the, is the central angle or where the 60 degree angle is the central angle. So that's where these three angles inside here come from. I'll go ahead and draw them right now. So first I draw the 45 because that kind of splits the quadrant in half. And then the 60 kind of splits this in half. That's just how I do it. I draw the 45 first. So the 60 kind of splits that and the 30 kind of splits this one. So now I have these points and this may be looking familiar if you have your unit circle in front of you. If not, it doesn't really matter. So what are these angles? Well, one way we can find out, okay, is that we can remember, well, we have 30, 45, and 60 degree angles here. So we can convert the degrees to radians. I personally kind of just memorize these. But if you really wanted to, again, you could convert to radians or you can think about, okay, zero pi over two, what's halfway between zero and pi over two? That's pi over four, okay? And you could kind of use a little bit of, you know, logic and problem solving to, to solve for these. But in general, we kind of just remember that this is pi over six, pi over four, and pi over three, okay? So pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, and again, think about this for a second. I'm only going to do this with one. But if this is a 30 degree angle right here, if this is a 30 degree angle, okay, think about this being a triangle positioned inside our unit circle. And I could do this with all of these. I won't because it's going to get messy. But I could draw a line down. This becomes a 90 degree angle. And then we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle positioned inside of here. We know these side lengths, and that's where we get the sine and cosine values from, actually. We get the, the y over... R, that's where the sign comes from, the X over R, okay? So that's the way I think of it. And the reason I think of these special triangles is because now what we can do with these special triangles is that we can reflect over the Y axis, okay? That's where all these angles come from. Think of these special triangles being reflected over the Y axis. And then what we can do is take everything above the X axis and reflect it all down. So what we have is 
special triangles. The side lengths are the same. These angles are the same, but they're just being positioned in different places. And using that logic allows me to kind of just memorize a few things about the first quadrant, memorize a few values, okay? And build the rest of my unit circle without even really having to memorize anything over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna actually, first I'm gonna draw these values here. What are these values? Well, I memorized this table, one, two, three, three, two, one. If you really wanted to, you could write out your special triangles and solve. I mean, that would be tedious to do that every time. I recommend just remembering one, two, three, three, two, one. So sine is the y and cosine is the x. Why is that true? Well, again, cosine is x over r. Sine is y over r. We have a unit circle, r is one. So cosine is just x because r is one. x over one, that's just x, right? So the cosine is the x, the sine is the y. All right, so I have root three over two, one half, and then here I have root two over two, root two over two, and then here I have one half, root three over two. Okay, so again, remember what happens? I can reflect this over this y-axis, and what's gonna change? Well, these values won't change, but some of them will become negative, and we'll see how that works in just a second. So think of reflecting. This is going to get a little tricky. I'm trying to draw this as perfect as I can. I'm probably just going to have to accept that it's not going to be perfect. All right. <laughs> so again, I did as good as of a reflection as I can. So since this is a reflection, this, if you remember, this is a pi over 6, 30 degree angle, pi over 6 in radians. And that means this is pi over 6. And I can use this to get my angles here because, again, I'm starting, when I have an angle, I'm starting at the x-axis off to the right here, and I'm wrapping around to form my angle. So I'm stopping pi over 6 units short, 5 over 6 radians, short of pi radians. So that means I can take pi and subtract pi over 6, and that gives me this angle. So there are a lot of different ways to get that angle, but that's kind of the way I think of it in this second quadrant, okay? So that gives me what? 5 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. And again, I could think of I'm going pi and then I'm subtracting pi over 6. I'm stopping pi over 6 radians short of pi radians. So how can I get this angle? Well, same idea. Or I could think of it as I have, let's see, pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, right? I can kind of get a common denominator, write everything over 4. Again, there are different, many different ways to think about this. Uh, pick a way that works for you. I would honestly recommend just getting some blank pieces of paper and just drawing a few unit circles and trying to really think about it. Get a really big cup of coffee and sit down and, you know, see if you can come up with some tricks of your own to, to remember this and to, to understand how this stuff works. So again, I still have my triangles in here. They've been reflected. So the way I think about this one is similar to the pi over 4. I have pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, and that's just kind of how I remember it. 2 pi over 3, and you could use that with the 5 pi over 6 as well. You know, pi, pi over 6, this is like saying what? Uh, 2 pi over 6, that's the same as pi over 3, so... Yeah, you can use that that logic as well. So now I can take all of these and I can, I can reflect down, but first I'm going to draw these points. If you think about it, this is the x and this is the y, right? Since we reflected our triangles, this length is still the same, this length is still the same. So is the hypotenuse of these triangles, they are all one, okay? So our r's are all one, and the distances, the lengths are still the same, but what's different? Now we're headed from the origin to the left, which means all of our x's are gonna be negative. We're headed up, so our y's are still positive, but our x is going to be negative. So these values will reflect along with the triangles, but all the x's will become negative. So let me draw my points here, points here. So now I have negative 1 half root 3 over 2. And now I have negative root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. The back of my head is totally, sorry about that. Uh, now I have negative root 3 over 2, 1 half. Awesome. All right, now think of reflecting all of these down. I'm going to do, do kind of a big step at once here because I'm going to reflect it all down, and we'll see how it works. So let me start dividing this up. Divide those into half. 
All right, and then those halves are getting cut in half. That's the way I think of it again. I just draw it up here. There we go. So I have two more lines to draw. There we go. All right, now I can draw all these points. And again, if you think of all these as triangles within the unit circle, right? Triangles that are sitting inside of a circle, it's the same logic. Logic. This distance is the same as all of these. This distance is the same. The only difference is the way it's positioned and the, the, the space is positioned in, right? In this third quadrant, what do we have? X is still negative because we're on the left side of this y-axis. But in this case, y is also negative because we're below the x-axis. So these values, again, will be a reflection of these values. But what will the difference be? My x will be negative still, and my y's will be negative. So let me go ahead and fill those in. Negative 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half. Hopefully I can see this. Negative 2 over 2, negative 2 over 2. Down here I have negative 1 half, negative root 3 over 2. Okay, and I'm doing the same thing here, but what's happening? Well, let's see. I'm to the right of the y-axis. So that means that what? My x is positive now. My x is positive. My y's are still negative, though. So now I have x is positive, y is negative. So here I have uh, root 3 over 2, negative 1 half. Uh, here I have root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2. Okay, then I have 1 half negative root 3 over 2. What am I missing, though? Oh, I need to find my angles, okay? And I could use the same kind of similar logic, and you can come up with whichever way you want. But think of this. I have pi... I know this angle is pi over 6 because I've just reflected that triangle. So I have pi plus pi over 6. That's the way I can think of it. So pi plus pi over 6, that's 7 pi over 6. What about this angle? Well, I had pi here, and now I'm adding pi over 4. So now I have 5 pi over 4. This is 5 pi over 4. What about this angle? Well, let's see. It's going to be something over 3. Let's see, I had 2 pi over 3. This is 3 pi over 3. This is 4 pi over 3, right? I'm taking pi and adding pi over 3. So 4 pi over 3. 4 pi over 3. Now these angles. So what I can do is kind of subtract from 2 pi, if I want to think of it that way. So I have 2 pi, and I'm stopping pi over 6 radians short of 2 pi. So this is going to be 11 pi over 12. No, 11 pi over 6. Sorry, I don't know why I said 12. 11 pi over 6. Because again, 2 pi is what? 12 pi over 6. I think that's why I said 12. 2 pi is 12 pi over 6, if I get a common denominator. I'm stopping pi over 6 short of 2 pi, so that's 11 pi over 6. We know this is going to be something over 4. So think about it. Same idea. I'm stopping pi over 4 short of 2 pi. So this is 7 pi over 4. Here we're going to have something over 3. 4 pi over 3. I'm just adding another pi over 3, right? Because if I add 2 pi over 3, I get to pi. Yeah, that makes sense. To 2 pi. So here, 5 pi over 3. Some people, some of my students told me this is the hardest part about the unit circle for them is labeling all the angles. And I was like, I didn't, I, ne I never thought of it. I always thought the hardest part was, at least when I was learning this, was like trying to position these and memorize all this stuff. So we're almost done. What are we missing? We're actually missing the easiest part, and that's these values here. Why are these so easy? We don't even know, need to know anything about trigonometry, right? Remember, we have a circle with radius one. That means the distance from the center to this point is one. That means we're moving one unit along what? Along this axis. So it's pretty easy. I mean, I know my y is zero because we're on the x-axis. And since we're moving one unit this way, I know my x is negative one. So I have negative one, zero. Okay? Same idea applies this way, just the opposite. I have one, zero. Same idea applies up, except instead of moving up, my x is zero, my y is one. 
And then down here I have my x is 0, my y is negative 1. Hopefully y'all can see down here. I'll have to check the camera. So yeah, this is how I build a unit circle from scratch. You know, the really the foundation of all this is understanding the, the symmetry of the unit circle and how I can kind of reflect some of these angles. And understanding this really will help you with finding exact values of trig functions with finding reference angles, which is your understanding of trigonometry in general. If you can really understand how these special triangles and how these angles and how all this stuff relates, the more you can understand, the more successful you can be in your class. You don't want to just only have the unit circle memorized and not have an understanding because, you know, the unit circle can fail you in some circumstances. I've seen it. So hopefully this helps. Sorry if the video was a little long and drawn out. But hopefully this helps some people. If it did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, leave any questions below, and I'll see you in the next video. We'll flex those brain muscles some more.